for New York. With the acquittal of the two police officers charged with raping an intoxicated woman, will this verdict make women more reluctant to report a rape? At Safe Horizon, which operates a rape and domestic abuse hotline, the answer is very possibly. They'll say, if you report it, nobody will believe you. Because of my position, um, I'll end up, I'll end up winning. And um, and then when you see a story like this in the news, it, it just contributes to that perception. She added, going public about rape takes courage. Well, it's not the news women want to hear. Rape cases in the city made a double-digit jump from this time last year. Amy Edelstein is a rape crisis social worker at Safe Horizon, a nonprofit that helps victims of violent crime. She says a spike in citywide rape reporting is actually good news. I think that, you know, sexual violence is not necessarily happening more, that um, people are just open to reporting it more. We need to give the victims the support that they deserve. Safe Horizon cree que no es tanto que el crimen ha subido, sino que verdaderamente este, todas las combinaciones de que más entrenamiento en la policía, los programas como Safe Horizon que están trabajando juntos con los programas de la policía, han ayudado a la gente a reportar más. How often the police respond to cases of domestic violence? Your group actually handles even above and beyond this. You do your own response. Right. Safe Horizon runs the New York City domestic violence hotline, and we want everyone to know that if you dial 311, you'll get to us. The police provide a critical response for people who are experiencing domestic violence, but victims may have many other needs, including a change of housing, replacement of the income that the batterer used to provide. How will they talk to their children? Do they need shelter? And these are the kinds of things that the Safe Horizon hotline can help with. Lawmakers gather at City Hall to focus on human trafficking. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney is looking to drum up support for new legislation. They will have to tell the world and take positive steps uh, to ensure that consumers know and workers know that they've made sure that everyone that works for them is being treated fairly. kids born after 9-11 understand it. Part of what we talk about is that this was a very unprecedented event, a rare event, and one in which society really, really responded and, and was there for people, and we focus on that with our children. The children may not tell you what they're, what they're thinking or what they're feeling, so it is so important for parents to open a dialogue with their children, to let them know the anniversary is coming, ask them what they're thinking about, what they're concerned about, and have that open conversation. This is Weekend Edition from NPR News. A startling statistic has emerged. Carter Sebron, the outreach coordinator for the Streetwork Project, says, The majority of the, of the youth we see who identify as being homeless also identify as being LGBT. His partner, Elena Wood, says it's not that all of them are thrown out of their home, although many are. It, I mean, it's a very fine line between what's their choice and what's not. A new CDC study indicates we are a violent society. 36 million people, mostly women, say they've been victims of domestic violence in the last year, and a million of them say it was rape or attempted rape. It happens in an extraordinarily high fraction of Americans' real lives. It's not a fringe problem. It's an everyday problem. That's Ariel Zwang at Safe Horizon, which helps victims of crime and abuse find a safe place to be. It's the early show. The investigations at Penn State and more recently at Syracuse University are having an impact on abuse crisis centers nationwide. These kinds of high profile cases, what we have seen is that they do open the floodgates. Liz Roberts runs Safe Horizon, a New York organization that assists victims of child abuse. What survivors see in this story is that there were um, child victims who came forward and that they've been believed, that law enforcement is taking action um, to hold the perpetrator accountable. Michelle Vajan is with Safe Horizon, a group that works with victims of abuse. 90% of perpetrators of child sexual abuse are people known and trusted to the child and their family. A relative, a teacher, 
a coach. It begins with the abuser grooming his potential victim. With a boy, we're talking about sports. It may be special attention in the coaching process, maybe special um, opportunities to see the coach outside of the confines of the normal coaching relationship. It might even be special favors um, in terms of how much playing time someone might get. And many of them don't speak up about it. Victims advocates across the country fearful a precedent was set after Topeka voted to no longer prosecute domestic violence cases in order to save money. The law would have meant some people who are arrested for domestic violence crimes could be set free and not prosecuted. We work with thousands of victims of domestic violence here in New York City every year at Safe Horizon and what we hear from victims is that it is so critical for them to know that if they report domestic violence that the police, the prosecutors, and the courts will take the crime seriously and will take action, a uh, coordinate action to protect them. And so a story like this really raises questions about the level of priority that has been being given to the needs of victims of domestic violence. Safe Horizon is an organization leader that assists a más de miles de familias victims of violencia domestica u otros crimenes violentos. Alrededor de la ciudad, Safe Horizon tiene varios refugios que incluyen dos de viviendas temporales. Proveemos eh, consejería, este, ayudar a buscar este, vivienda permanente, porque esta solo es una vivienda temporal. También les ayudamos este, a conseguir ayuda legal, ¿verdad? Este, si necesitan ayuda de un abogado.